Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today we lift up the Almighty, the Lord of hosts, Yeshua, Jesus himself, the Messiah. Amen? Amen. And we know there is no other. Amen? Amen. And today's message is about the rapture during the apocalypse time frame. And so, brothers and sisters, we all need to be ready to meet our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, let's look at Matthew chapter 24. And to lay the stage, the disciples are with Jesus on the Mount of Olives. And they want to know what are going to be the signs of the end of days. And so Jesus responds. We'll start reading verse 7. For nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. I'm reading verse 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. And brothers and sisters, we are there. The gospel has been preached to the whole world. And it's time. We are in the last generation. And you can see here that he tells us that there'll be wars. We know we have war right now. There'll be pestilences. And we know we have that. And there's earthquakes. And we know we have that. You all are aware of the huge earthquake that hit Turkey? Thousands and thousands of people died. And so God is not happy. Because people think that they are natural disasters. Hurricanes and earthquakes. They do massive destruction and kill many people. But no. I say they are God's disasters. All things that happen in this world happen for a reason. It's not a coincidence, brothers and sisters. So we're going to read about this, about the end times, where we are today. And so the second passage, please turn with me to the book of Revelation chapter 7. And we'll start reading verse 2. Then I saw an angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth and the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. And it goes on to say that it's 12,000 of each tribe. And brothers and sisters, those 144,000 are in Israel right now. And so now we will continue reading from verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. And so now the angel tells John who these people are, reading from verse 14. These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation, and washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, serving Him day and night in His temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountain waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So brothers and sisters, that is you and me if you're saved today. If you believe that Jesus came incarnated from heaven died and was buried and arose for your sins and mine, and you have repented of your sinful ways, brothers and sisters, you have the Holy Spirit, and you are going to be one of those people in white robes, washed with the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So get excited about that. And we will be with our Lord and Savior forever and ever. And God himself will wipe away every tear that you have. And there will be no more crying. Amen? Amen. 
But remember, brothers and sisters, the first passage we read, that's the beginning of right before the tribulation. There's wars, there's pestilence, there's famine, and there's earthquakes in many places. And so we all need to be prepared. If your hand is in God's hand, he will protect you from all evil things, brothers and sisters. You see, God is a refuge for us. In Psalms 46, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Because, brothers and sisters, God says that we are not appointed to the wrath. And that's the great tribulation. And it's way worse than what you are experiencing today and what's coming. Because when that happens, it's going to be hell on earth. But, brothers and sisters, he's going to rapture up the church right before that happens. And so if you're right with God, be of good cheer. Amen. Amen. Revelations 3.10 reads, Because you have kept my commands to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world. Brothers and sisters, that is proof. The Bible does not lie. The gospel is the truth, and God cannot lie. He's going to keep us from that trial, that great tribulation that's going to hit the world. Brothers and sisters, so be of good cheer. We will be out of here in heaven with our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 reads, For God did not appoint us to the wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you're saved today, be of good cheer. God will take you up with the church when he comes. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus comes and we will all die and arise in a blink of an eye, brothers and sisters. Because, brothers and sisters, we all have to die to arise. That's what a resurrection is. The body reunites with the soul and is made brand new. Amen? Amen. But, brothers and sisters, it's going to be quick. It's not going to be an agonizing, long death like our Savior did for you and me. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, Jesus died for you and me. We ought to be willing to die for him. Amen? Amen. All the apostles died martyr deaths, except for John. Everyone has a different cross to bear, brothers and sisters. You have yours, I have mine. So we need to keep pressing forward for that upward call, knowing and trusting in Jesus as our refuge. And he will wrap his wings around us and protect us. And he will hold our hand and take us through the fire. And we will be with him forever and ever, brothers and sisters, where there's no more pain and suffering. Amen? Amen. So keep pressing forward for that upward call. And know that God is not happy with the world as it is today. So much immorality and violence and hatred. God is going to destroy with fire. And he's going to make a new earth and a new heaven. And if we are not in God, Doing God's will, we will burn up with them. But we all need to be ready to meet our Lord and Savior face to face. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you're saved today and you have the Holy Spirit in you, rejoice because you're going to be with our Lord and Savior for eternity, forever and ever. Amen? Amen. And if you're not, and God is tugging on your heart to accept Jesus in your heart and be ready when he comes, to take his church up. Please bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Please, Father, forgive me for all the sins that I have done. And please, Lord, help me to make the proper changes in my life. To repent of these sinful ways. Please help me to get rid of this carnal mind. And please fill me with your Holy Spirit. And your will be done, not mine, Father. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so if you said that prayer, you made an oath to the Lord, and you need to keep it. If you say you're going to live for the Lord, you need to live up to it. If you are serving God, you will clean up your life. And you do this by making proper changes in your life. First thing, get rid of evil company. The Bible tells us, and we know it's true, evil company will corrupt good habits. So make proper changes. Anything that causes you to sin, get rid of it. The Bible tells you if your eye causes you to sin, get rid of it. Pluck it out. Better to go to heaven with one eye than go to hell with two. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean really pluck out your eye, but stop doing what's causing you to sin. Amen? Amen. And he knows you're not going to be perfect, and he knows you're going to make mistakes. But he doesn't want you to backslide. And that is going back to sinning the way you did before you were saved. And brothers and sisters, when you renew your mind to have the mind of Jesus, which is to please God and do his will, God will renew your mind completely and take out that stony heart of yours and fill it with a new, pure, loving heart with Jesus inside of you, brothers and sisters. Fill you with the Holy Spirit. You understand? Because God is love. And if he's inside of you, you will have that love. And that's how you know if you have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And if you said that prayer and you don't have a Bible, get one. We need to read the Bible every day. It's our spiritual food. And we need to pray every day. He wants communication. And find a Bible teaching church to fellowship with. And he loves singing worship songs to him. So sing worship songs when you go to church. And download Jesus songs on your phone. And listen to them all day long. The devil cannot attack you as long as you're singing Jesus songs or reading the Bible or reciting a, a scripture. Amen? Amen. And when you get the Holy Spirit, you simply rebuke him in, in the name of Jesus and he will flee anytime he tempts you. Because there's power in the Holy Ghost. And what's inside of you is stronger than anything in the world, including the devil. Amen? Amen. So may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.